in January, I scored like a 139. Um, the highest I scored with my recent weeks, like a 152. So I've been right. progressing. But I'm looking to at least reach 160. So I'm kind of like having my tidbits, like where on my logical, um, my, um, look at me, about to combine the uh, sections, the logical reasoning. I would like notice that I get like 12 to maybe 13, right? But I'm like just trying to figure out what small things like that I need to hit more. I just figured out something for reading comp though with the uh what Iyak on Iyak they say mm-hmm. yeah, her yeah, um yeah. with her doing the paragraph thing and that's, I've been doing that all day and it's like making a difference already. So great. No, I'm really glad to hear that. For logical reasoning, what's your process like? Um, so like I tip I don't have like a, a, a hard like process, but what I did realize was that I just slow down and basically like the way I was looking at the questions, um, let's say for the looking for the gap, like I truly had to go through that same question type to understand, okay, this is what this gap is talking about. Not just ex- essentially like the, the, yes, the flaw, but you know, it's like you actually see what that answer choice is connecting between your uh, premise and your conclusion. So it's like, I don't have a clear step, but I like when I go into it, I know what I'm looking for when I slow down. So maybe that's why I haven't, you know, gotten that to click yet all the way for it. Right. You got to slow down and look for the gap, whether it's Mm -hmm. a flaw question or some other question type, doesn't matter. Find the conclusion, find the evidence, and then ask yourself, what's that disconnect? How is it possible for the evidence to be true, yet for the conclusion to be false for every single argument you encounter? And um, my logic games has been really good, but I just have to find out how to speed up. So I don't like, I write down my rules and I'll go to, um, I don't make inferences because I find that I, I hesitate so long that it, it hinders me with the questions. So I just go in your order, how you go from local questions to the global. And that has helped me tremendously. So I just need to get my timing up so I can fit one more game in there because I know if I can get that other game or at least a couple more minutes i can like get through them like with no problem awesome so it sounds like you're really maximizing your use of the previous work by doing them in that order yes that's awesome i would look to see if there's anything you could do to make inferences up front if you see the same variable featured in multiple rules for example Mm -hmm. that's an indication that you might be able to combine them right well no yeah i do in that instance like that's like a smaller inference but i'm like like you know how some of them where you can like write out the entire game and have it like this option or this option like I can do that because I was also granted extra time um so I have the 53 minutes so I feel like that has like gave like lifted like a big load to where I can actually like slow down and think because it takes me so long to process the stuff and the inferences it makes me like hesitate way 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 too long which I can do it but I just feel like it messes me messes with me with time right that's fine you don't need to map out the entire thing up front Mm-hmm. Um, but my biggest, my biggest, biggest thing was before I watched Yaka's um thing was the reading comp. So I'm practicing playing with that, and I'm like, it's becoming totally different for me. So I think my main thing is my logic reason. I think it's possible because from a 152 to a 160, even like my last one I did the other day was like a 149. I did, but I scored horrible on, on my um reading comp. I only had 10 right out of the section. And I'm like, well, you know, if I would have had that together, I could have been, you know, more in the range. So I'm like, well, I need to figure out, I just want to figure out like some type of process for the logical reason that I can like know for sure, you know, instead of me just, I know you have to just, it's just looking for that gap, which I do see now that different, that like made a difference, but is there, are there any other steps that I should be taking into consideration or? Well, I already mapped out for you, just conclusion, evidence, gap. That cuts across almost all of logical reasoning. But aside from that step-by-step approach, I would also look at what does your review process look like after the fact? For Mm -hmm. any question you get wrong or have difficulty with, what are you doing to note the mistakes that you're making or the tricks that you're falling for so you can avoid making them again? Mm -hmm. So like once I get it wrong, I'll like I the last like just a couple of days ago, I was like, let me see if there's a pattern in which question types I'm getting wrong, which I found that it was like assumption and um causes the question. So basically weakening um were like my main ones. So 
I'll say, okay, I chose this answer and I'll compare it to the correct answer and see what the difference is because I typically always get it down to where I narrow it down to two. And of course, I always end up choosing the wrong one. So I sit there and I compare the two, like, okay, why is the one I selected different from this one? And I see what, and I'll go back and look at the, the argument and see where it complies. And I'm like, okay. And I'll sit there and just look at it and keep reading it again until, I get, until it clicks like, okay, this is what it was. Like, this is this small word that is too specific or, you know, this is not broad enough or something like that. So I literally just compare the two answers and compare it to the argument and read it over and over until I understand or see what that difference is. That's great. I mean, that's what it's all about. I would encourage you to write down your thought process in terms of what you're noting. So mm -hmm. which tricks and traps are you uniquely prone to falling for? What's tempting you about the wrong answer? What's unappealing to you about the right answer? But what mm -hmm. still makes it correct? So you'll see in a lot of the workshops, you've been going through the reading comp ones with Ayaka, go through some of the logical reasoning ones where I use a Google Doc. Because you'll mm -hmm. see how I take notes on what that review process can look like mm -hmm. and different angles you can use to approach whatever LR questions are giving you trouble. Right. Um, yeah, because like one new one I noticed, it was like probably different for me was like the word, the meaning of the word was used differently in the conclusion. That was the first time I saw that. And I was like, oh, wow. And it took me a minute to realize what that issue was. But then I looked at it and I'm like, oh, it is in a different context. So it was like, but that was one I never thought to expect to look. So it was like, I like when I run into those things because it's like, okay, this is a new one that I know, you know, it kind of makes me open up the box, think outside the box a little bit more that, that I run into those. But I just, I think I'm gonna have to do that just to write it down, just so I can see and look at the list of, okay, just like a reminder of, what these are because just recently I just went and looked at the like, you know the question types which is something that you think you would have been but like I think I was just so flustered and everything that I finally like okay slow down this is it like once I started to start my see myself like improve I was like okay what smaller things are we doing now that we can fix that we can dig a little deeper to get to that next level awesome yeah I mean like something like the change in definitions over the course of an argument you're right, that doesn't come up that often. And so with just simply more exposure alone, you'll come across those methods of reasoning or those flaws that show up less and less frequently. But the more you can add into your library, the better, because mm -hmm. that way, when you encounter it again, you'll recognize it that much more quickly. Yeah, because I was what I've been doing was looking at your the classroom videos, and then I'll go on Khan Academy and run that kind of question type. And you know, it gives you the explanation as well. So I still look at that look at both and just kind of play back and forth so like there is a full explanation of it as well but I can also still see and compare it to your methods because your like the methods I learned from like the course itself like has changed my thought process of this whole test like entirely like it's a like an eye opener and like now I feel like I, I can actually conquer the LSAT but I'm shooting for the 160 because I'm taking it in November Mm. So I think that's a fair range to kind of keep myself in with it um, because I want to apply to start in the fall, of course. Nice. Well, now between now and November, you've got plenty of time. You've got at mm -hmm. least six, seven weeks. There's enough time you can make anything happen. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm just like, it was like a big relief though. Like I really feel like, like now I feel like I'm more excited to get to it because I'm like, let me keep running. And then when I'm drilling them, I'm not drilling the easy ones. I'm going to the advanced ones only. So I'm like, well, if I can figure out what the problems are with the, the hard, you know, the harder questions, once I see the easy ones, it'll be like, okay, well, this is that. And it clicks a lot easier for me. So I thought I've been challenging myself with only doing the advanced ones on the Khan Academy one and kind of like doing the ending ones uh, at the end, like, you know, how it typically goes from easier to hard. So I kind of like challenge myself more with those because that makes me think, on a different level when I see it on the easy one, it's like, okay, well, you know, this is this and that it falls right in. So I was like wondering if that was like a good approach to do, or should I still do like the different levels of it or. I would say probably you're going to be best served by doing full sections because that oh, yeah, no, no. reflects yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly what you're going to see on test day. So if you're doing a range of difficulty, that's totally fine. Do some easy, mm -hmm. some medium, some hard. Don't do only harder. That could be kind of discouraging. Don't do only easy because you want to challenge yourself. Right. But full sections are the best place to get that wide variety. But any so drill you I've, want to do on con, it's fine. Yeah. So like recently, like mid-September, I started doing 
I would do a full practice test on the weekends. And then throughout the week, I would do, because I get off, I work a 12-hour shift, of course. So once I get off work, I would do a time section for each test. And then I'll go ahead and, you know, get my raw score and see what I would do. So that's how I do basically, you can say two tests, um, two time tests a week. So everyone I've been doing has been time. I haven't done it on time. I've been pacing myself. So I actually been seeing my real results when I freak out, when I run into a crazy game. So, you know, I'm getting that different reactions. And then I've still been scoring, like I said, between what the 146 was the lowest I did. And then 152 was the highest. So. Nice. Well, you're well on your way. I'd say going forward, add in more review, just mm -hmm. articulating the review, writing it down. That's mm -hmm. the biggest suggestion I'd have for you. Okay. And I think that I'm going to take those, <laughs> those practice tests that I did that though, that was time to go back and write down and see what, you know, if I can re-identify those and make sure that, you know, I have a complete understanding of it. Because I think by me being used to the time situation, you know, it's nothing new. So if I take the time, more time to review once I go and I'm be able to knock it out the park to just go ahead and hit it. So sweet. Any other challenges or questions you have about what you um do? that was it that I was gonna have I, I literally had in my notes about the reading comp and I just played around and I kept seeing people say Yanka, 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 in which I read I went through the court like you know I watched the videos and I'm like well let me take a look at this one more time just to see you rewatch it and I'm like okay that makes a big difference and I'm like the only thing with that one is uh how she says the primary purpose how you just say conclusion or problem or whatever um I feel like with my mind like my mem my short-term memory is like not there which is how I got the extra time so I feel like me writing like one extra detail or a little bit you know more can help me not have to reread the whole entire thing and I can reference to that you know um so I think with me having the, the extra time maybe I can you know can spare that extra few words I can write yeah. so I'm like so just kind of you got to uh, adapt it for yourself a little bit but if you have the extra time that can help. And mm -hmm. those are all just different models, like simple structure, complex structure, mm -hmm. however you want to lay out your notes for reading comp is totally fine. I think really complex is better for review than for timed conditions, but mm -hmm. you find your balance. Yeah. And I noticed that like, I was able to pace myself with logical reasoning that I was able to get through like a couple of times I actually got through all of the questions but I didn't have that key factor of looking into it. So it was like, I hit that range of oh, 12, right? or oh, 13, right? But it was like one good time I had like 16 or 17. I'm like, okay, you know, something I'm missing that it's something small. It gotta be like the easy overlooked mistakes or something that, you know, it's just not, I gotta sit there and kind of find it. So I think writing down would definitely make the biggest difference for me. Um, but I did have a question. So I'm, I can use, I have, um, they also allowed me to have, um unlimited pages for notes so i can take notes throughout the reading comp section right yeah okay all right yeah S scratch paper can be used for all sections doesn't matter okay. obviously people use it a lot for games but taking notes on reading comp and or even lr sometimes is totally okay. fine just be conscious of how much time it's taking you to write right, things right. down yeah that's why every time i do it i make sure i'm doing it time like i'm not even like playing without the time like everything i do I just want to have it time just so I can know, always have that conscious feeling of, you know, so especially with me being a month out, like, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I think that was all the questions that I had. Um, the reading comp one, that one, that was a big relief for me to get. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause I think That's that great. actually helped me with speed too, because I can refer back, okay, this is that and I can go right to it. So I think that was all the concerns that I pretty much Awesome. And I just well, want to also think, do you think that's a reachable goal? Like for me to hit the 160? I do. I do. You're doing all the right things. You're doing the time to work. You're take, figuring out what kind of note-taking structure works for you. Mm -hmm. I say just keep at it. Do the LR Socratic review method process that I lay out in the workshops. Okay. Imp implement that. Just really look to get your key takeaways from whatever's giving you trouble, but you're doing all the right things and you're on the right track. Okay. And I also, I, so I started my draft for my, um, for my uh, personal statement as well. Nice. Um, and I think I got a good, pretty good structure from looking at the classes on there so far, what I had, um, but are there live class? Like, so I think I'm, is it a Sunday or something that they do the live class for the personal statements? 
they're doing them on Sundays and Wednesdays. And so they're starting, I think it's going to be Wednesdays going forward, starting next week. Okay. Okay. It'll be listed was, on the course sidebar, but I'm pretty sure it'll be Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay. And is the only option to put your, my paper, or like submit it for review during class, or is there another option where they can look at it and tell me from where? So basically you could submit it in the Google form and then they'll mm-hmm. review it during class in a group setting. If you want more one-on-one private support, they charge extra for that because it's a separate personalized service. Mm-hmm. So it's all just about what you feel comfortable with. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm, I'm fine with it being like, I like what, for more people to be able to look at yeah, it. Yeah. Then you get more feedback that way. Yeah. Okay. I think I'll round it off a little bit and I'll try to do that too while I'm in the mix of all this, but all right. That makes me feel a lot better though. <laughs> nice. And by the way, you, by the way, you could submit multiple essays. So if you're writing multiple essays as part of your application, like personal mm-hmm. statement, diversity statement, any optional essays or addenda, mm-hmm. even your resume, you could submit all of that and they'll cover it in future classes. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, definitely. Well, thank you for everything. Your strategies are amazing. Made a big Thanks. difference. I was at prep, so on the way. <laughs> Thanks, no, I appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing all the right things. If you have any, any questions or need anything, reach out, I'm here for you. All right, thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.